Hi everyone, lots of requests, and the time has come for the full reveal of the Palms of Atrium skill tree. So if you watched my first video, you, uh, you saw what I did early on and why I did it. So if you want to know the strategy of how you should progress the map, I recommend checking that out. That one out. This one's going to be a full reveal, kind of showing you where important nodes are. And, you know, you can decide for yourself which ones you want to try and get first. All right. So right away, there's some important node right there. The Queen's Portrait. This will allow you to get pages in the Runes of Eternum. And the more pages you have, the quicker you're going to unlock this tree. Otherwise, you're just in the city is where you get them. So I recommend grabbing this uh, as your first priority. After that, you want the boss to drop candles because candles are important. So you might want to put one point into there. Over here, you get the extra room. And then up here, you get, again, double, you get the chance to double the pages. So more pages equals more money. Over here, you get the deacons. These are the magic monsters. These are the deacons. These are the shacklers. Um, these are just extra monsters to get added in. The monsters have better chance. Some of them drop pages. Some, they always drop loot. So if you like farming rare monsters to get, you know, Chance at loot or pages, you can add those in. Not really a high priority. I'm kind of like leveling them up now to test them. I'm not really seeing massive gains, to be honest with you. But down here, you got the pages of Passage of Time. This is how you get the candle wick. And you use the wick to fight the boss. This is, high, this is very, very important. You should prioritize getting this if you have any plans of fighting the boss. If you don't care, then you can ignore it. Down here, you get another expansion. Up here is more expansion, expansion, expansion. So if you're looking to fill the map up as quick as possible, so you have all the rooms unlocked, you need to get these expansions. And if you want to remember where they are, they're like the last purple circle kind of hanging off of all the paths here. See, purple circle hanging off, purple circle hanging off. And then finally over here, purple circle. Up here, we have more page doublers. So just like over here, you're doubling the pages. So if you care about getting as many pages as possible, you're going to end up going over here, double pages over here, double pages up here, and finally, one more set of double pages down here. Very important stuff. Over here, this gives you an extra tile. So at the end of the map, you know how they give you a tile to kind of branch it in? This will give you an extra tile. And then finally, up here, an extra tile. So you can have three tiles now. Uh, total to add to your map to make it easier to connect to get more treasures. It's pretty good to have them All right, what else is super important? Well the ultimate room What is the ultimate room? Well, the ultimate room is a pink room So when you see a room and it's pink and it's it's not orange, you know, it's not purple. It's not blue It's like pink that's the ultimate room, and it's going to have increased drops for whatever it is. So if it's currency, you're going to get more money. If it's legendary armor, you're going to get tons of legendary armor. If it's memories, you're going to get tons of memories, and so on. So it's always good to have this. It only takes one. You need it for your path anyway, so you're just going to end up getting it. This is 10% chance that the room will be a legendary reward. More rewards is always good. Finally, over here is where the precious stuff starts happening. So if you're precious farming, 10% chance for precious rewards to appear after unlocking the candle berm of sacrifice in the city. So what that means is you're more likely to get precious rewards. So I don't know if that's the precious reward tier or precious legendaries or whatever's going to drop, but I mean, precious rewards usually mean really, really good things. So I, I put it in there and ever since I have, I've been, I've been getting a lot of good drops over here. It's small. It's not as strong, but you can, you know, you could throw more into it. There's the experience ones. And I'll be honest with you, as someone who loves experience as much as I do, I'm usually the one grinding experience. These, these I feel, are a complete waste. You probably shouldn't invest into these. But if you really want to and you want to boost your experience for some reason, go ahead. Uh, up here, I think these are very, I think this is probably one of the best nodes in the city outside of the pages. Drop quantity and drop rarity. The, this thing is bananas. Um... The, the increasing the drop quantity a lot, like the drop rarity, sure, you get lucky. It's magic find. Who doesn't love magic find? But drop quantity in this is ridiculous because already without it, 
you're dropping crazy amounts of currency, crazy amounts of everything, gear, memory fragments. And now I'm getting 50% more of that just because I put five nodes. But that, and then, then you get another 10%. You, you just keep getting more drop quantity everywhere I look. It's really, really good. I recommend uh, investing in some of that. Over here, you get more drop rarity, drop quantity, like we're talking about, drop rarity, drop quantity. Just keep investing in it. It's good times. Uh, as for the monsters, same thing. You get smaller ones. If you like fighting the monsters, uh, go ahead. Finally, I go over this in extreme detail in the first video about the candles. It's very, very important. I recommend getting it super early. I did. Check it out if you want to know everything there is to know about how important it is in the candles. But in this video, we will show you what's down here and what's important. So you're getting the, um, the boss to drop a candle. You're getting the second candle slot. You're getting the, the candle burn of sacrifice. So you can burn. This will let you fuse the candles, essentially. And now the monsters in City of Sanum will drop the tears. So you use the tears. And now you can keep the tears. So you can't fuse the candles until you get the tears. Once you get the tears, every time you leave the map, you're going to lose them unless you have this. This will let you keep the tiers when you leave the map, so you don't have to fuse them every map. Finally, there is a limit to how many of those tiers you can hold, so you're going to want to have this if you're like me and you don't want to fuse all the time. Increase your limit so you can hold more and it gives you more freedom instead of having to fuse after every time you go in there. If you're really liking candles, you can now get the chance to make a copy of it. And making copies of candles is kind of important because you fuse them together. And the way you fuse them together is by them having the same mods. So if you're getting a copy, it's already got the same mod. So already you just get a fused candle right out the gate. So this is pretty good, as well as you can, you know, small ones up. This makes you hold more. This one is now the tiers of Eternum dropped in the city of Eternum. Have, you can double your tiers. I'm gonna be honest with you, doubling the tiers is not a high priority. I'm always at cap. If you're someone who's more efficient and just splams tears, 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 then this will speed up your fusion. But you're going to run out of candles, I think, before you run out of tears. Uh, yeah, so keep that in mind. But there's the whole tree in all its glory. And once you have one, and then up here are the big nodes. We'll talk about them, but they're, 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 they're not that crazy. You get movement speed for 200 points. Over here, you make the monsters deal less damage in the city. And then finally, you make them have less life. These cost 200 each. And you can put 100 points into them. They're, they're, out, they're, they're end game. So eventually, that's going to be how you, how you scale down the dungeon to go really, really deep. Early on, you just need one point in there. Once you put one point into every single talent, you don't need to have five. You don't need to, you know, like I do. You just need to have one point in every single node. And once you do that, you're going to unlock the endless days of eternity right in the center of the map here. And it's going to cost you 100 more pages to unlock. And once you have this, you officially have the infinite city of Eternum unlocked. The city of Eternum will have a tier. Once it reaches level 84 and higher, and the tier increases every time you clear the city of Eternum at the current highest tier increasing both the difficulty and the amount of rewards. So what that means is once you go to a city, as long as the average of the maps you cleared to make the city equals 84, you'll be able to do this. So if you're doing tier seven only, you cannot do the infinite city. This is a tier eight thing you need to do. Now, does that mean you, can, you have to run exclusively tier eights? No, that's not what it means. It means you need to run like five tier eights and uh, four eight, uh, three eighty threes and one eighty two or six tier eights uh, and three eighty two maps. So keep an eye on what tier sevens you're running if you're doing that, because if you run too many eighty twos, you're going to have to go back and run the sixth one to make up for that average. The key here is to keep the average eighty four or higher and then you'll unlock it. Once you unlock it, you'll be able to run it. It'll have a number on the side like a scrolling wheel. You can click it and move it up or down. It'll start at one. Every time you beat it, you'll get a new number added. And next time you'll be able to scroll to two, scroll to three, scroll to four. 
but that doesn't mean you have to stay there. If for whatever reason you want to bring it back down, you can always bring it back down and you'll, your progress will be saved. So hopefully this helps you understand the map a little better, plan your way around the skill tree a little better. And of course, as always, if you have any questions, be sure to hop over to Twitch while I'm live at twitch.tv slash Mike1up and ask me all the questions you have about the tree. If you throw questions in the comments on YouTube, I will get back to them. Just keep in mind, it takes a little bit longer since I'm always, always up live streaming on Twitch. It's probably the best place to grab me. All right, guys, good luck on your adventures, and we'll catch you later.